But oh. I'll, I'll switch this. I'm going to make the brightness go up some. All right, we're live, just so you know. Hey, what's up, everybody in the chat? Jason's hiding in the dark here. Okay, now we there can see is. me again. <laughs> um, it, yeah, what's up, everyone in the chat? Welcome to the, the live stream. Uh, we're going to wait for some more people to get here before we get into it. But what's up to everyone who's already in the chat? Uh, literally action figures, Josh Brown. Josh Brown is a huge fan of, of Spiro Toys. You've probably met him oh, a few sweet. times. I, we probably have met. Yeah, you were at you were at Legion's Con, right? I was. Um, I actually missed the first day last year. Or well, this last this last one, I missed the first day because I had to drive. Uh, we did a show in Maryland the week before, and we just kept the van. And I thought I would be able to like return it in New Jersey, and I wound up having to drive all the way back to Maryland. So oh, pretty shit. much missed Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> it was interesting. I was like, "What is going on? This is craziness." <laughs> Um, but yeah, Josh Brown's a big fan. Uh, Hankin, what's up, yo? How's it going? Happy Friday, everyone. Lucky Butter, Bread C29, Marcus E, uh, Mythic Dolphin, what's up, yo? Ray Paz, Bobo, what's cracking? Uh, Brick something, there's your homie Brick. What's up there, Brick? What's up? Uh, literally, Action Figure says, Kanji is the goat. Everyone should at least grab that bunny. Do it for Wade's bunnies. <laughs> his, uh, his alternate head's going to be really cool, too, so... You can kind of, it's almost like two figures in one. You can kind of army build them if you want. So, oh, okay. Have you shown that? I was looking at the. No, it's just a, like right now, like Utomo is showing me illustrations of it. Um, so hopefully they'll get cracking on sculpting them next week. We'll, we are going to show like 2D versions of them soon, probably on Monday. Oh, okay. Um, uh, what's up, Derek Chandler? What's going on? Jamie in the Parks, Marvie, up, Marvel Derek? fan, Infinity, Tu Madre Stan Gorda. What's up, yo? Austin I'm M says... Four... I need to scroll down. What's that? I'm realizing I need to scroll down. I, I, I thought the comments would just like be showing up like in uh, like on YouTube, but here we go. Oh, you yeah, on the program, it's weird. Here. You have to kind of like, you have to kind of yeah, like I'm gonna, scroll. I'm going to pull it over here. Yeah, I'm going to pull it over here so that I can read the comments. In, uh, Invincible uh, Toys. What's up, yo? Invincible Toy says, bro, What's nice up, to see the two of you on a stream. I know, right? Wade was my good luck charm for the first Kickstarter. Because <laughs> we, yeah. we did like the opening day. We did the opening day of the campaign. So that was awesome. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I tell people all the time that I that I was a, a supporter of your stuff. Even when you were doing the three and three quarter inch stuff, um, I was into Thanks, that. Man. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um. Speaking of that, before we get into this Kickstarter brothers. and stuff, we'll talk some shit. But uh, yeah. are you are you ever gonna go back to do three and three quarter inch stuff? Uh, you know, if the if the uh, if the fan base for it is there, then I would love to because I love I equally like a four inch scale and six inch scale. Um, you know, the last thing that I went like really crazy on was uh, the the world of Halo four inch figures, and I just bought a ton of those. And it was exciting because I was like, cool, four inches back. And then, you know, it was almost a lot like a promo for the video game. And the video game came out like two years ago. So uh, I think they had like four or five waves and then they were kind of done. Were those the so, McFarlane ones? No, they were, uh, uh, what were they? Oh, Jazzwares. The Jazzware, maybe. Yeah, the yeah. Jazzware. They're really, really well made. Uh, it's interesting because like I didn't actually like the six inch scale Spartan. So, uh, it was interesting. You would think like, you know, er the, everything right now is six inch scale, but if it does come back around, I'll, we'd love to like do a release. Like if we release a six inch version of pale, the ideal would be to release a four inch version as well. So yeah, I think, like at uh, the same time, you know? yeah, for sure. I, I think uh three and three quarter inch scales definitely kind of slept on. Like it does have like its own, like kind of market, you know, like with, uh, right, you know, yeah. acid, Acid Rain and and uh, what's the Acid other one? Acid Rain, Joy Toy. Joy Toy, Joy yeah. Toy. Yeah. Yeah, um, eventually man, that's... Both, yeah, they're both awesome. Yeah, uh, especially Acid Rain. I love those. Those things, they're, Dude, they're, they're crazy. They're so good, man. I haven't bought any in a while. Uh, they are, you know, they're a little bit higher priced figures. Uh, yeah. But they're just fantastic. Uh, I think that the three and three quarter inch figures like really lend themselves to vehicles. Um, for sure and i think with 
you know, there, there's a, a couple of stuff going on where, like, you know, all the movies and stuff, you know, like the Star Wars movies and Marvel movies, like, they didn't have a ton of vehicles and stuff. I mean, Star Wars always has, like, their ships and stuff, but, uh, you know, for the most part, like, Marvel stuff is mostly superheroes. We don't see them, like, in jets all that often. You know, they'll yeah. do the... Uh, They'll do the shield jet, and that's about it. You know, you don't really see much besides that. So it's it's all about the figures, and the six inch scale just really lends itself to that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I guess the only big vehicle that from the Marvel movies is like the shield uh, helicarrier. Carrier. That's about right, it. But yeah, that, and that's that would like, be even in three. Right? It'd be too big. Yeah. If they would do the uh, like, if they would do the helicap, the, what's it called, the helipad, like uh, the same thing as like the flag from uh, the eighties, that would be uh, epic. Yeah, that'd be crazy. But like, shit, I don't know, man. Like, I, I could, I mean, I'd be, I'd love to have something like that. But where I wouldn't, where could I store it? I don't buy any vehicles because I, I don't have any. Know. Like my his tank, the 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 Hazlab tank, I still in the room because I haven't figured out like a way to display it with the rest of my GI Joes, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, are you a big fan of those GI Joe classified? They're killing it. Oh man, I love them, dude. I have a ton of them. Uh, I have a couple of Action Force too, uh, but I don't know. I just feel like they're just so good. Uh, at first, they, they were like such a pain to collect because I guess because they like debuted during COVID and it was like a hassle to get, it, get any of them, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then like the target stuff being, you know, all these like really sought after characters like the Cobra Troopers and stuff being uh, exclusives made it a little bit more painful than it needed to be. But it feels That's... like they've they've hit their stride. They're they're doing like really good releases uh, relatively often and stuff. The, the only thing that I've noticed is that uh, they do those like retro card backs. Yeah. Um, and like they've just been unfortunately like just peg warming the bejesus out of them uh, at my walmart so i almost kind of like want to just buy them up and wait till uh you know christmas for toys for tots or something just to get them the hell out of there <laughs> yeah Plus, kids will enjoy some action figures you know so it's a, it's a win-win for sure yeah no the first couple of waves of the retro card backs like the uh i think it was gung-ho and Mer uh lady j those those yeah. ones are yeah all over the place yeah, we've got like like at our our Walmart that's like right down the street. It's um, uh, there's a, a bunch of Lady J, some Baroness, and then Destro, and they're all those are all awesome figures. It's just that, you know, it's it's a tough thing. You know, we don't. It's it's easier to like move army builders, you know, than it is to move those main characters like that. Yeah, for sure. And plus, since they've already kind of released them, right? Like most of those right, don't really that's have. True, yeah. Um, and but you know, like with the. Like, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, and I was gonna say with the new retro card wave, like the one that has Duke and uh Yeah. Dude, uh, I got that figure. It's awesome. Duke and Scarlet. Scarlet. I didn't get I didn't get Scarlet yet. I pre ordered them at the same time, so I was kind of surprised I didn't get them at the same time. Uh but I like finally caved and I bought the uh the Cobra Eel, which I didn't realize I didn't realize it was a uh a Walmart exclusive and and I never saw it, so I was like, whatever. I, once I realized it was a Walmart exclusive, I went ahead and ordered one, and this, I kind of turned him into a ninja. Oh, nice! Uh, but like, dude, like, no joke. Like, I think four days after I got him in, then I saw that they were releasing him again in the uh, retro card, and I was just like, oh well, I'll get I'll get two of them and have a little three squad uh, Cobra Eel unit, you know? Yeah, for sure. No, that Cobra Eel is is uh, really good. Dude, it's so good, man. Like, uh. I, I can't get I can't get the uh, I can't get the helmet on all the way, but I had planned to display them without it anyway. So it's, to me, it's not that big a deal. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Yeah, and then they and then they've re released a couple of different figures like on that same body that. Uh, yeah, I forget what the I've other got, one was. I think it's a torpedo. Yeah, torpedo. Uh, that's have, it. That was, yeah, he was the first one that I got, and man, he's so good. Uh, he comes with like a great little submachine gun with a silencer, and then the, yeah. the harpoon gun. They both come with the harpoon guns. Um, but yeah, they're both really, they're really well done. And then they, then they did a third release on that body that was just, it's the one that's hitting stores now. I don't even think it's a character. Really? It's like a, I don't know. Huh. yeah, it's oh, like a, yeah, it's like a Navy seal, right? Yeah. And it comes with like Dude, a bunch of crazy accessories. So yeah. I saw it. Uh, we, I saw it at Toy Lanta. I saw that one. And then there's another army builder that's like just all in khaki and he's got a, uh, like a, uh, 
a desert poncho that goes over it. So yeah. Yeah, I have that one. That one, I haven't opened it yet, but it looks good. Wherever yeah, the hell it's Hold at. it up. I want to see it. Can you see it? Is it in like a pile? Uh, <laughs> no. It, oh, yeah. Here. Just like... It is in a pile. So Wait, here it is. I, yeah, man. Look at that. How cool is that, dude? I love the packaging, too. It looks so good. Yeah. Look how many different. It looks like it comes with. Is it two different heads? Yeah. But two you can different... make like several different looks. That's cool. And they're different ethnicities. Like one of them is African American. Yeah, and that's. One... Dude, like I got. I said I wasn't going to buy any more Star Wars toys until they came out with the Indoor Trooper. Yeah. And like they got the face swap. And I was hoping they'd have like a black guy. And I was like, okay, well, I, I can make it. I can customize it. And uh, so I got five of them. I waited till they went on sale. I got <laughs> five of them. And then um, I had. Uh, you remember the Black Panther figure? The, the big black guy. I don't remember what his name is, but I had like three of them at three of those heads. And I was like, I'm going to cut it up and use that as one of the, the faces. But I tried to do it whenever, like right after I had my uh, LASIK surgery and like everything <laughs> was fuzzy. And like, I just wound up shaving too much of it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to wait until I can actually see to like custom to customize it. And, and I don't want to like cut up another head. Waste yeah. Another head, you know, but, Here, uh, hold on. Josh Brown is yelling at me that my, uh, that my, that either I'm too loud or you're too low, but everyone always like this program. Like, huh? I feel like I, I feel like we both sound good. I don't know. I thought so too. I don't know. You could hear me. I could hear you fine. I can hear. Yeah. What's up, Derek? Happy Friday. Um, but anyways, yeah, before we uh, get too far into um, talking about other bullshit, let's talk about your, uh, let's talk about your Kickstarter. Um, so let's do it at this <laughs> point. At this point, you're like a you, you've conquered Kickstarter because you've had like how many successful Kickstarters have you done? Um, so in the in the if you look at like how many we created, it's nine. But one of them didn't uh, we didn't make gold. That was like our very first try at the four inch scale, um, and like that was a bummer. I mean, I think I think it was in like 2016 that I tried that, uh, but otherwise I, all the other ones have been successful. So. Um, I guess it comes down to a couple of things. Like we're, we're putting out really good products uh, and the fans seem to resonate with it. And um, timing I think is, is really good as well. Uh, and uh, I feel like there's another element that I'm missing, but uh, yeah, that's, it's a, it seems to be a winning combination. So, and, and we don't take any of it for granted, you know, like everything, like you never know until it, you, like you kind of put it out into the world. So, uh, I feel like we've been like super lucky and and uh, with production and then the, the fan response and everything and uh, we actually launched this one on the same day that the comic the first issue got in comic shops so I think there was a little bit of crossover with like comic collectors uh, seeing the toys on the back of the on the back of the comic so oh yeah it's been sure. really awesome yeah no that's 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 dope what's, what's funny dude what's funny is like I I changed the back of the cover right before we went to print. And I totally forgot to put the barcode. I forgot to put the barcode on it. So like, they uh, Diamond had to like redo all. Like had to uh, bag and board everything and, and physically put the uh, the barcode oh. sticker on there so they could scan them. And I was like, oh my god. So oh but, shit. Uh, I talked. Yeah, it's it's not that big a deal. Uh, but I, we did like we've got like several other issues going out so like i i made sure that i put everything on the back this time so so it be a, a problem this time when it comes to the comic are you doing so you have currently you, you sent me some digital issues of of like a mini series right? right it's like it was like one through five yeah, i sent you one through four yeah or no i sent you one through five yeah, yeah yeah all five were in there and but uh so is that what's being released in the store yeah so issue one came out on march 6th and then uh, there's going to be like a slight delay. The next issue won't be out until May. And then after that, it'll be May, June, July. You know, it'll keep, oh. it'll be monthly after that. Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. I just, I just didn't submit uh, the listing soon enough for the, uh, for us to make it into, uh, the, into the previews catalog. Okay. So after this uh, five issue miniseries, are you doing, is there going to be like an ongoing series or is this, was this yeah, just going to do a second story arc? Yeah. Second story arc. Uh, I'm also thinking about doing uh, a one shot of their, the two characters in the Kickstarter. There's uh, 
uh, a bulldog and then a fox called uh, Boone and Grimes. And uh, they're right. part of the Pirate Guild. And the Pirate Guild essentially controls all the trade routes that are kind of connecting all the, uh, the great houses. So uh, they're going to have like their own kind of little adventures and stuff. And they'll, they'll factor into – yeah, there's one of them. There's, uh, that's Grimes. They'll factor into the main characters and cast story. But I thought it'd be fun to do like a little one shot with uh, just them having their kind of own adventure and, you know, kind of letting fans get to know their their personalities and, and backstories a little bit better. Nice. Nice. Yeah, because the main the main character in the main story is Pale, who was like the main figure of right. the first wave. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We had Pale and then Kali was the main villain. Um uh, and we're, we're going to get those again in this Kickstarter, but they're different versions of it. So like the first the first version, we got uh, Pale in his adventure armor uh, and then Kali in his conquest armor. This time we're going to be getting uh, Kali Prime. So as you read the comic, you'll see that there's like there's different iterations of Kali because of, you know, I don't want to spoil it for people, but uh, he takes different forms and whatnot. And then uh, one of the our Kickstarter exclusive is another version of Pale who's uh, basically like a hologram version in the comic yeah, that's... book. Uh, he appears as a hologram a couple of times. So that's our spectral version. Uh, and that figure will glow in the dark. So uh, oh, shit. Glow it... in the dark stuff, right? It's see-through and glows in the dark. Yeah. It will glow in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. That's cool. It should be fun. Who doesn't like glow in the dark? I'm such a sucker for that stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, glow in the dark glow, stuff glow is always the dark fun. And slime, right. And translucent too, you know, like anything Iceman right, yeah, yeah. or whatever. It's always right, fun. Yeah. So, yeah, that that picture that you had is uh, just like a three D print. So, uh, like his, uh, what's the word? Uh, all like the disc and stuff will probably be like opaque. They won't be clear, you know, just because right. uh, the material like structural issues. They'll it'll be it's just too brittle to do it. But I mean, all of all of that stuff's essentially hidden with armor and stuff like that. But I felt like I should probably mention it. I think I think people are kind of used to that, you know. Like people, yeah. whenever you get a, a a clear figure, the joints are always a different color because it's a it's a oh, different exactly. material, right? Yeah, yeah, man. I got. Uh, did you get that Crystar figure? Yeah, that shit is dope, dude. It's so good. Holy it's... cow! Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's funny is uh, <laughs> my little girl's been like she's got interested in like collecting bugs and stuff, and right now at this time <laughs> of the year, the uh, there's caterpillars that are out, and so we were in the driveway. And she was like, can you come and hang out with me while I collect these bugs? And I was like, oh, yeah. And I I, uh, I was joking around. Like, I took this He-Man and I took Crystal and I was like have, making them battle yeah. in the uh, in the driveway. And she was just like, oh, my God, Dad, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed yeah, so whenever you like, stop making this. She said she was like, stop making this, the sound effects and I, in, in narrating. And I was like, I'll stop narrating it, but I'm not going to stop making the sound effects. <laughs> I notice whenever you take pictures, when you're like, you know, fucking around with your figures, it, it's yeah. always like in your driveway or in like. a Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just walk outside and I'm like, plop, take a picture because we yeah. have a gravel driveway. So, yeah. And no, that's awesome. Uh, that he man, cool that he man is awesome, by the way, that you just Dude. said. Okay, like, so I got him. Like, the second I got him, I was like, dang it, I have to get another one. So, like, I actually have the same. This is the same figure, but he's got, like, that alternate. Uh, oh, yeah. The metal straps. The know, classic the classic look. Golly, it's so good. I've been waiting. Uh, I really, really like the Masterverse series. I think it's really good. Um, it seems like it took, like, too many tries to, to dial in the, the He-Man and Skeletor, but this version is so freaking good. I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, hence why I got two of them. Uh, I think they've got their Skeletor coming out soon. That's got, uh, it's the version that's like on a throne. Oh Actually, yeah. You have to buy it together, but that one looks like it's like basically like the equivalent of this, but they do have a battle, a battle, uh, you know, like the, whatever this battle damage armor, they've got another one. So, I'm not sure. I'm on, I'm on the fence which one I want to get. I probably won't end up getting both. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, Masterverse is definitely, uh, they're killing it with the He-Man stuff. Like, really in my are. opinion. They've got so many good things. Yeah, in my opinion, those are some of the best figures that you could just go to the store and buy, like, any anytime. Right. They're, like, at every Target, you know. Yeah. Yep. That's, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to collect them. Uh, for, like, the longest time, uh, my Target has been, like, really doing like 
carrying like current waves. Uh, so it hasn't been like an issue trying to find stuff. And I went the other day and they restocked it with the Sunman wave. And I was like, why, yeah. why is this, well, this is like a year old wave? Like good they Cause like they had like, they went from like the current wave and I'm guessing that like, they just found that wave in the stock room. And I was like, yeah. Ugh, is this going to sit here for a while? Cause I remember, uh, like the, the sun man wave came with like a figure, a he-man similar to this with a beard. Uh, and then they also had like a ton of, uh, that, that deluxe beast man, which was really cool. Oh yeah. Um, what's funny about that is like, I got it and I noticed that the chest had this like wash that didn't match the rest of the body. Yeah. So I spent maybe like 30 minutes. I just went ahead and like repainted the thing and just slapped all the armor back on. And I was like, cool, easy fix. But I realized I was like, not everyone's going to be wanting to do that. And then like within like maybe a week after fixing it, I saw that they had like a fact, they did like a factory change, like super quick. It was probably maybe like realistically like three weeks. Yeah. All the other ones showed up with like, without that weird wash on it. Yeah, for sure. They got enough pushback or they, yeah, they got enough pushback and they're like, oh, we got to fix this, you know? So. Yeah. I remember that. Like everyone was disappointed. And then next thing you know, like yeah, it wasn't an issue. So. I wonder if like having those older ones will be rare or something. I don't know. It's you never know. It's it's one of those things where uh, I if it what's fun. It's so funny you say that because I've been telling people to uh, you know the new X Men ninety seven villain the one that's got like the black uh, cloak or the like the trench coat. Yeah, He's executioner. Got, like, red. Yeah, he comes with this with this laser rifle that's got this piece of plastic on it. Yeah, and I've been just telling people to throw it away and they're like what it's supposed to be on there and i was like yeah but it's dumb so throw it away <laughs> and, and like 10 years from now that little part's going to be like 20 bucks on ebay you know like 50 bucks on ebay or something because everyone tossed it i threw mine away i was well, just why like, do you why, why do you want people to throw it away <laughs> i was just joking like i like on i was like telling people that i know i'm just like, <laughs> oh but you threw yours away I, I threw mine away because it kept falling off and I got aggravated and I was like, oh, just tossed it. So, yeah, I just <laughs> chunked it. Um, So you want to give us a I, I think a lot of people here already know about your Kickstarter, but do you want to give like a rundown about what, what's up with your Kickstarter or anything that you want to put out there? I know you're kind of making yeah. social media rounds already, so you're probably sick of doing yeah, this. We're but doing the, we're doing the publicity tour, um, but essentially we decided that uh, instead of slowly introducing a new buck or a new body type every like two or three waves. Uh, we wanted to kind of really expand our parts portfolio. So we decided to do this Kickstarter and, and a couple of people were wondering, well, why are we doing, why are you doing another Kickstarter? And we basically said, you know, once you see the scope of the Kickstarter, it'll make more sense. Um, uh, so it, in the first Kickstarter, we did essentially two body types and this one, right out of the gate we did four body types uh and now we're like on our way to unlock a fifth body type which is the bird uh we're, we'll be uh dan's actually sculpting the bird excuse me he's sculpting it now he was teasing me earlier he's in new york and we were we were kind of i was asking about the earthquake and stuff and i got oh yeah that's crazy yeah he said that he felt it it was like uh he said it felt kind of like the trains nearby were rocking the building but yeah, we decided to do this Kickstarter in order to uh, help us gauge the interest on those body types uh, to get into the, the toy coverage cycle and bring awareness about AWOC. You know, we've had the figures a little over a year now. We're in year two and we've been doing, like you mentioned, we've been doing the press tour on a podcast and we've been doing a convention once a month to just kind of really get the name out there and introduce people to the figures. Um but doing the Kickstarter is going to allow us to, you know, get all this molding stuff, you know, all the molds and stuff taken care of. And also it's going to like slot us in because the factory's going to see like, oh, hey, they have these figures slotted for this delivery date. So they can kind of work us around in their uh, in their production schedule with their existing clients. I'm sure you know all about that type of stuff. But a lot of people don't, you know, from the front end, don't understand about like scheduling and stuff with your with your factory and production stuff. Um, yeah. And this will basically just help us speed up and get all these parts that we need to make a ton of different characters like that, uh, that rabbit body you saw, we made, you know, a rabbit and a fox with it so we can do stuff like coyotes or raccoons, you know, Oh, are they the same body? Wait like years. What's that? 
There the so the raccoon. I'm I'm sorry. The rabbit and the. Yeah. So you, yeah, if you look at those two, the difference oh. between those two is uh, so they share the same arms. Obviously, not the robot arm, but the same arm and the legs. Yeah, I see the, that. Uh, uh, but the heads are different, and uh, the feet are different. But and, and they've got a different torso. But everything else is you know shared parts. Do they still have uh do they still have butterfly joints in there? It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, so everything everything in this Kickstarter so far has butterfly joints. Uh the only thing that we've done so far that doesn't have butterfly joints is the gorilla. And he was just way too like his arms and shoulders were just so big that the like there was just not enough like real estate inside the torso to like fit those uh, those butterfly joints. But even our buff guys, like like even the bulldog, those all have butterfly joints. Oh, okay, uh, cool. And we, we, that's another thing. Yeah, we uh, on the first Kickstarter, we we could have done pinless, but we wouldn't get as much use out of the parts if we did that. Uh, this go round, we decided to go ahead and go pinless. So uh, all these figures that you're seeing will be pinless, uh, with oh, the nice. exception of the spectral pale, because that one's already got the pins in it. It's an old, older mold. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's the Kali Prime. Oh, okay. I didn't realize yeah. this. Was, I thought this was a new character, but yeah, that shit is crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you. And and you know, I love those accessories. Uh, the little shield that's hooking onto his arm is removable. If you uh, if you don't want it plugged into his uh, his gauntlet, you can have, there's a, a a handle as well. So there's kind of two different styles that you can do with that particular shield. Um, and then nice. he's got that big cleaver and then he's got the uh kind of two two-handed stylized club damn it's kind of hard to see on the screen but it's like this like a uh, dual like it's got like these two monkey heads it's really really cool um that's another thing on this kickstarter you know in the last kickstarter all of our weapon sets were essentially repaints of parts that were packed into the toys oh okay uh, this go around we decided to do just like really unique weapons for you know uh, that it's essentially 90% not included with the figures. Uh, so it's something that like, if you really want to like trick out your, your figures, you can go ahead and get that weapon set. I know like personally that, uh, the skull buster or the, uh, yeah, the skull buster weapons, like there's a big sword that I'm going to give to the lion. The lion comes with a really great broadsword, but, uh, Let's I don't know see. that particular, that's yeah, there it is right there that, yeah. So he comes with that, Really great broadsword. It kind of reminds me of the sword from Excalibur from the uh, Disney yeah, for sure. Game. It's slightly different, but it's very you know simple and and gets the job done. But uh, there's in the little in the little weapon pack, the sword's just a little bit more uh, more ornate, and I feel like I'll probably wind up giving him that one. But it's all about giving your uh, the customers and fans a little bit of extra choice. So we, we for like sure. giving the options uh, and and. We talked about Masters verse. I know I'm going to probably use a cl one of those big clubs. I'll probably give that to Beast Man or Whiplash, uh, <laughs> and you know, uh, I'm going to I'm going to use some of those weapons for my Mythic Legions. And uh, there's a new line coming out called Savage Crucible. I'll be using them for that. Uh, Savage so yeah, Crucible, like any kind of awesome. sword and sorcery stuff. Yeah, man, they look amazing. I can't wait to check them out. I mean, I've seen them at shows. They're freaking awesome. Yeah, they uh, look so, crazy. Yeah, the, Dude, they look absolutely amazing. I can't wait. I know they're going to kick some butt when they come out. Uh, so, yeah, if you look at Kanji right here. Sorry, Kanji. I always, I'm always i saying it wrong. That's my Cajun accent. They The, the guys tease me because I say it wrong. It's Kanji. Uh, so he comes with three arrows. Like they that quiver is like it's not sculpted. The, the arrows aren't sculpted into the quiver. You'll be able to take all three of them out. Oh, nice. That's That's awesome. Yeah, I thought uh, it was kind of just like a little fun extra touch. Yeah, I think he's the one I'm most ex most interested in because I, I just like bunnies. But, I mean, all of them. Yeah, the big characters know, look really good, too. It, it's interesting. It seems like uh, so so the rabbit and then the chameleon towards the top seem like they've got the most, like, fanfare. Uh, and what's interesting is both of those figures have uh, elements on the head that move 360. So, in this case... Uh, the chameleon's head, the eyeballs move 360, and on the rabbit, the ears can move 360. So it's just kind of like a fun little extra gimmick. Uh, nice. And then all of the reptiles actually have opening and closing mouths. 
So oh, if cool. you look at the little, uh, he's got a little chain whip off to his, uh, off to our right, but his left hand. Yeah, you I can see. actually unplug that chain and plug it into his mouth. So like instead of like a, an organic tongue, he's got like this chain whip with a spike. Oh damn! Uh, and the snake. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, he's a, he's essentially a rebooted version of a character from the 2011 comic. Uh, and we're kind of like slowly reintroducing all those characters uh, into the into the new comic. Uh, and if for some reason you don't want to display him with the chameleon head, he comes in a, with an additional snake head. And that snake head has like a, an acid or like a venom spitting effect that's not pictured in there. Oh, nice. So uh, for, for the 2011 comic, was that was that just a, a miniseries as well? Yeah, you know, uh I remember uh, sitting on the sofa and I was thinking, you know, I want to do something creative and I don't, but I don't have any money. And uh, I, what I do have is I can draw. So like I went ahead and just drew this six issue story. Uh, and it's kind of like, just like a standalone uh, comic. Uh, and oh, okay. whenever we did the reboot, I thought, you know, I want to do this as like a, a continuing story. And so we treat each issue as an episode and each story arc as a season so like the first five episodes or the first five issues would be season one of the cartoon uh gotcha. and then whenever we do get to make the cartoon and that way you know if we you know we're talking to like a, a studio or animation studio we can be like here's your here's your uh your roadmap or whatever to, to kind of follow and i'm sure there'll be some like character development episodes like because you know most seasons aren't five episodes it seems like they're like nowadays they're like Eleven episodes, which I'd be totally fine with. So, 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 uh, bringing up the animation and stuff like that. How far, how far are you guys away from that? Is that like within the scope of like the near future, or is that like a one day we'd like to kind of thing? You know, uh, I can't confirm or deny anything. I'll just say that. Okay, but it's uh, it's closer it's than hey, stuff. it's closer than just an idea. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, it's not like it's not just an idea. I'll say that. Yeah, there you it's, go. Uh, it's stuff we're working on. Very that. cool. Yeah, you know, I, I think like I think like doing that type of stuff is key for for guys like you and guys like uh, plunderlings. You know, like you guys have these right. things oh that God. like yeah, this stuff is so good. Yeah, uh, uh, I think we I think we talked about it on the last one of the shows we did. I mentioned that I did a bunch of his paint masters for him, and uh, damn, you like do a lot of that. Asking me for. Yeah, I did. Uh, so I did uh, biker mice for Nacelle uh, and their packaging for uh, for biker mice. Those were those came out so good. They did. Uh, and then I did two paint masters for their uh, the expanse. What's it called? The, those expanse figures that they were doing. Oh, uh, yeah. I think they're doing a Kickstarter for that, too. And then the packaging for that as well. So. Uh, I didn't finish up the packaging. I noticed they added some elements to it, but I think that's pretty standard. You know, like the biker mice, it seemed like they didn't add anything to it, which, which I was happy about. Uh, you know, I don't take it personally. It's just one of those things. Like a lot of hands are like working on creative stuff. So Yeah. Um, no, but the, bi the but biker yeah. mice came out really nice. Well, what's interesting is like when – when we like so the paint masters that i worked on like uh they didn't have the ab crunch and we were like man if they do the bikes they're good you need the ab crunch you know so we were kind of relieved when they like added additional articulation we we're like okay cool yeah and that means that they're going to be doing the bikes and then sure enough they showed off the bikes and stuff and we're like okay cool i think now, right like, there now I, I think them like, adding the the ab crunch was the whole yeah. that that changed everyone's mind i, I oh, think man, before it really did they're, yeah, they're, man, they're good, dude. They they did a really good job. I'm 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 really happy for them and and how they're, um, what they've got going on over there. You know. They're yeah, really for cool sure. Stuff. They they're killing it. I can't wait for the uh what what are those called? Those cows? Those uh I always forget oh, the, the names. Uh, Moo Mesa. Yeah. What's funny is uh, uh I I don't know if you know Derek, but uh I asked I asked Derek about it, and I was like, Have you did you hear about this Moo Mesa stuff? And he showed me like a he showed me like a picture of like all the figures from the nineties. I was like, that answers that question. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. Um, <laughs> I was like, okay. Oh, but yeah. You, so what I was saying before was like people like you guys and plunderlings, 
uh, that have like this whole universe built and like both you guys kind of feel inspired by the same stuff, you know, like old school, like colorful, yeah, crazy, yeah. you know, cartoons yeah, and yeah, toys. Yeah. And I think it's like essential yeah. to to get into the different like mediums, toys, comics right. and then cartoons, especially. Yeah, totally. I mean, like uh, I mentioned it on a couple different podcasts, but uh, when so when I, I had chicken pox in the second grade, I remember just sitting on the sofa and uh like back back then it was a big deal to have like a remote control for your vc bar you know <laughs> and i and i but i only had one tape and it was like sleeping beauty and uh the disney robin hood so like i just kept rewinding and watching those and like the colors in sleeping beauty i think like really like left an uh an impression on me like it kind of affected my palette and then oh, okay i also mentioned like when everyone like asks me about color palette I, I always try to mention uh tom whalen who's a fantastic artist um like seeing like his vivid palette i was like wow i like i really like that and he kind of like i kind of used him as a guide to kind of figure out my own cal color palette and then obviously the anthropomorphic element of robin hood uh the disney version it was just uh really just great i mean i just i love that cartoon and Oh yeah, no, that's it. So it's great, yeah. Yeah, one of the best, one of the best Disney movies. Um, here, let me get a let me get a few questions from people because we're kind of just talking along, and I'm, there's a bunch of good questions in here. Okay. Oh, uh, real quick, Erwin Popo. Hey, what's up, yo? He says, "Good seeing you," and MCU collector, uh, and John to the Ross at WonderCon. Congratulations, Spiro. Yeah, what's up, Erwin Popo? Good to see you, man. Thank you. Um, and a lot of people were saying how you're uh uh a walk would work really good in like an anime style um oh God, yeah i would love that austin m says quick question will all the avians alternate heads be drastically different army builder different or will they just be variants of the characters heads need to know if i want duplicates uh, yeah okay so for raven his alternate head is actually uh he's got like this rice hat like a, you know like a kind of like a, a dark i'm not a dark uh, like a, a straw type hat so yeah. he's essentially the same head uh the same character but the other heads uh scathing um uh, and meryl will have uh, different heads so they'll essentially be you know you can create two different characters with those heads nice nice um and then marcus he says jason do y'all have any plans to do any insectoid bug characters a spider or beetle warrior would be sick yeah, um, so the first insect type character that we're gonna do is gonna be uh, it's gonna be a reboot from a character in the 2011 version, which was basically like a golem of insects. So like it was like this creature that was like the same height as everyone, but like he was made up of tiny bugs that was was like oh, collective. Shit. Yeah, which I think will be like a really compelling looking action figure. Uh, it's nice. something that I want to include slime with, you know, for that <laughs> character. Uh, but I really want to do, uh, I do want to do insect type characters, but one of the things that's very important to us and the AWOG brand is to, uh, have it make sense and be introduced in the comic first before we, uh, make any toys for it. So, uh, once you see it in the comic, then you can kind of bank on us, uh, you know, being in, or in, in the design phase for the figures. <clears throat> okay so if you see it in the comic you could kind of count on it be you guys are at least right. work starting to work on it on in the figure or for the figure um yeah there's a ton of easter eggs in the comic so like in the first issue um we show off the elephants and we show off uh, a water buffalo or an ox uh, oh nice. like it's kind of like a blink and you miss it type of thing but it's in there uh and then yeah so that guy they we show both of those guys in the in the uh in the first issue so you're like oh okay i can expect that at some point and now here they are man yeah mamba looks well both of these guys look crazy but mamba yeah, I'm, man this that's gonna be a big old chunky monkey big old tater tot he's it's gonna be a, a big heavy i was actually thinking about today how, how it's gonna <laughs> be packaged and everything i'm like you know most of our figures are uh 20 to a box uh thane is actually 10 to a box just to show you how much bigger he is. And then this guy's going to be around 10 inches uh, Damn. tall. And then he's almost as wide as he is tall. So it's going to, I'm like thinking, I'm like, what is it going to be like five of five 
to a box you know what i mean five to a case <laughs> yeah it's gonna uh, ship just one yeah, one at a time really cool. right yeah <laughs> yeah the uh uh was it the battle toads figures the one the big boo. bull that they have what was it no i just said boo <laughs> I, well, I saw uh, there was a, a, a retailer at uh, at Toylanta, and they had an empty box of that. And I was like, how many of those things fit in this box? And he was like, just two. And I was like, holy crap, that's insane. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, for you guys that, like, ship, like, high volume of shit, like, it's that's yeah. that's got to be tough. Like, that could kind of, like, make or break a situation, you know? Like, the amount of shipping costs that it would take to. Yeah, like, yeah. So, like, real talk. Like before you ship your uh, your figure, you need a. Uh, do you have your Shopify set up, or you have like yeah. Shopify or Square? Yeah, I, like I have a get, Shopify. Yeah, yeah, like you get really good discounts. I mean, it's still expensive, obviously, but uh, you know, even if you're I, gonna do it just for a month, like upgrade to the like higher level of whatever, like the higher tier, because you get additional discounts on shipping. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, actually, I'm using not. Really you know what? Cool. I'm not using Shopify. I'm using a uh, big cartel, which you know, just like Shopify. Something similar, yeah. 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 But if they have like tiers, they'll probably have you know uh, better discounts on shipping if you do like a slightly higher tier. Oh, okay. But I, I had mean, like, yeah, I had a yeah, yeah look, when yeah, like this this General Mamba right there. Like I can tell you right now that that hammer, you know, if you've got the Thane figure, the the Thane's hammer is as tall as like a regular figure, maybe like slightly shorter you know yeah that hammer is going to just tower over a regular figure it'll be <laughs> uh and and all those accessories are going to be just big honking chunks of plastic so um uh, i really feel like that figure is going to look like even if you're not totally invested in awok you have that figure it's going to be like a real showpiece on on people's shelves yeah, no, it, it looks dope. And uh high school creation says can you speak to the articulation for mamba trunks ears um, so like the ears will be, uh, like a softer plastic so that he can like look left to right. The trunk will be, you'll be able to like move the, the, the tusk around. Sorry. Let me go. Let me get to the tusk first. So the tusk will be removable. Cause we want to do stuff like crack tusks and you know, stuff like that. Different style, different shapes and stuff. Uh, and then the tusk, I mean, then the trunk itself will have some sort of articulation, but we haven't even started sculpting it yet. So I can't speak to like what style articulation it is but it's definitely going to be articulated to some point um i wish i had the snout i wish i had that uh the masterverse snout spout figure so i can look at it i need to order it well It'll but probably have some sort of segmentation in it but oh I just, right i need some sort of point of reference uh the idea is to have that nice balance of like uh you know aesthetically pleasing but also function in a practical way um so once we actually start sculpting it, we're, we're all going to brainstorm and, and try to figure out the best way to do that. Um, as far as like the uh, the body will most likely not have a butterfly. It'll probably be so, kind of similar to the way Thane is um, as far as like the arms go. And then the chest will most likely be. Uh, let's see if I have a figure. I, I have all like Marvel stuff. Oh, oh. It'll probably be similar to this where the where the, uh, the cut is like right underneath, you know, and then he'll have that swivel right here. Um, but everything, you know, like all the feet and stuff should have thigh swivel, uh, double jointed knees and uh, rocker feet. Yeah. See, it, it kind of, when you're doing something that big with enough, like all that stuff going on, articulation, yeah. like you could put stuff in there, but it's not going to move, you know, like that's, just, right. that's how it is like yeah. just with big figures. Yeah, we were, you know, we were surprised how much movement we were able to get out of Thane. I was not expecting that, to tell you the truth. I was like, it's going to be cool looking and then kind of like, a, you know, this big giant chunk of plastic that's like intimidating your other figures. But um, they were able to sneak in a good bit of articulation into it. But like you said, like this is going to be something that's, you know, it's he's so big. He doesn't need to be like a ninja, like doing flips right. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, like honestly, uh, like for something like this, if you could have them in a cool walking post, then you could kind, right, you kind of, exactly, yeah, can get what you're gonna get out of it. You know, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, he might be able to do like a one-legged kneel, you know, like a like a half kneeling, like where one's kneeling or whatever. But uh, you know, we'll we'll know a lot more once we actually start to sculpt on it. But 
it's going to be an awesome figure. Uh, I think people will, will like really kind of clamor for it. And I think he'll be kind of similar to Thane in the way that like, you know, pick people pick up Thane and, and it introduces them to the AWOC line. And then they, then they kind of go back and pick up, uh, you know, they'll pick and choose stuff. And then there's other collectors that, you know, are fully into the line. So. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, cool. Like, says he wants a bendy trunk. Oh, bendy trunk. Yeah. That'd be cool too. But I don't know. I yeah. like the segmented, the segmented thing too, how yeah. you said. Yeah. I, we just have to think about it. It, you know, it probably will be segmented. There's, uh, I don't know if you, I don't know how far back you went collecting, but I remember, um, the sleepy hollow McFarlane figure. There was like a special edition where there was like no, no joints showing on the, on the legs, you know, and, uh, after a while that stuff deteriorated. So, yeah. uh, and, and something similar happened to the, there was a clay face figure, uh, where oh, yeah. the plastic started on to the deteriorate. Arms. So yes. So I'm, I am paranoid about that stuff. Like I want, you know, these figures, I want them to be, you know, 20 years from now you pick them up and they're just as good as they were before, you know, the day you got them. Uh, yeah. so it, there's certain things we kind of have to weigh and, and figure out. Yeah, I I think like like you said, like a, an elephant's trunk has wrinkles and stuff. Like that's the perfect right, place exactly. to. So we'll be able to hide it. Yeah, yeah, the you'd be able to hide it. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it's definitely rare that like uh people are able to do like bendy wire as well. Jada toys on their new Dulcim Street Fighter figure, like the bendy wire in that is is awesome. Yeah, dude. I heard that. I thought, and that's that's encouraging. Like I want to I want to get a hold of that figure. Uh. And kind of check, check. All their other stuff has been really good. I, I'm like, I don't, I don't have any like skin in the game with them, but I'm like just really proud of like how much they just kind of seem like they just kind of came out of left field and just really kicked the ass this year. Like they've got those uh, Mega Man figure that look great. Yeah. Uh, and then they had the uh, Chester Chester Cheetah figure, which was really cool too. Yeah, for um, sure. And even yeah, man, they're, uh, doing, they're doing great stuff, dude. Yeah, even I think it was I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but they had the uh, Universal Monsters, which I, I oh, love. Did they really? Yeah. Really, I didn't know that. I I, I thought uh, I thought that was NECA for some reason. Well, ne NECA had them too, but Jada Toys had like smaller, more articulated versions of them. Oh, okay. Wow, that looks great. Yeah, and like the the cool thing is like the articulation is crazy. Like the NECA ones are awesome, but you can't pose them, you know. Right. Yeah like yeah see like you could get them into all wow, kinds of good cool, stuff dude. wow man that's great yeah they do they do really great work dude it's cool yeah no for sure they are killing it um are you gonna do any are you gonna start incorporating any soft goods into your your guys's lines let me like um, any capes so or anything the, yeah so the answer is yes like if you like, scroll up just a little bit more um so so that one right there that oh wait that one right there. So it's not pictured, but he's going to have a poncho. Oh, nice. Uh, and that'll be our first forte into soft goods. Um, I kind of like to treat soft goods and uh, stuff like dry brushing and washes kind of like uh, the original trilogy lightsabers where like they're like few and far between and they feel really special. Right. So, um, you know, there's certain characters in the comic we just cannot get away with not doing soft goods. So uh, we've got a chimp, uh, uh, excuse me, an orangutan called Lorange, and he's going to need a soft goods tunic mixed with a little bit of plastic belt and, uh, you know, like a sash and stuff like that. But he's a character that's going to uh, really require uh, soft goods. But uh, yeah, Raving will be the first uh, character that'll, uh, that will actually feature soft goods. Yeah, uh, so for me on on my uh, odious figure, the soft goods are like the has dude. have been the hardest part. <laughs> Man, yeah, dude. Like whenever whenever I saw like how many pieces you were doing, I was like, I was like, I don't think people understand how ambitious this is. You know, like the figure <laughs> itself is amazing, but I was like, man, he's doing like, it's like the shirt. The, it's how many? It's like how many parts? Shirts and pants and what else? It's like a, it's pants, the it's undershirt, jacket. the jacket, and then one more yeah. like Dude. flannel jacket. Yeah. yeah. Like, man, that's freaking baller. Like, that's so awesome. <laughs> I, I, man, like what, what's nice is like any figure you do after that, like if it involves soft goods or something, you'll be like, I already went through the trenches. I know what to expect. So 
I, I'll be interested to see how it goes for us uh, because it's like uncharted territory. I know the factory's done it before, so that you know we've got that going for us. But oh, that's uh, good. It's one of those things that what's that? No, I was saying that's good because because like my factory yeah, was like. Yeah. The way my factory approached it was they kind of were like, oh, yeah, yeah, we could do it. We haven't done it, but we can. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Right. And then now that we're kind of doing it, like, it's not quite what I want. You know, like, I, I wish it was better quality. And now they're like, well, we can't find better quality. And it's like, ah, well, let's keep looking and whatever. But um, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's, it's you know, what what I would say, what I would do, and, and I have really no experience with, with good stuff. Uh, Eric Eric Harker is doing our salt goods, by the way. Um, oh, nice! Go to the Hell yeah. Shop. yeah, dude, he makes freaking those. Yeah, so obviously our cape or our poncho is gonna have the the wire and stuff in it, so you can kind of pose it dynamically. But you know, cool. I, I would just go to the fabric shop and find some stuff and be like, instead of what you're using, use this. You know, like I I still remember like our first production, and it was like a totally different factory and stuff. They kept sending me like shiny stuff. And uh, so I took like two pictures of like the same exact Carvette and one was like black matte and then the other one was like black shiny. And I put like a red X on the shiny and put like a, a green check mark on the, the, the matte. And I was like, this, do this, not that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, so you can try that. You definitely have to like, like, I don't want to say dummy proof because, you know, it could be like a language thing, but you definitely have to make it super clear with visual indicators and arrows and all types right, of shit. Yeah. Yeah, well, the thing is, is like a lot of people, like I think, uh, especially Americans are like real mavericky and like are like think and like problem solved stuff. If like, if they're like sitting in front of the computer and they're like, oh, hey, uh, Microsoft's not working, I guess I'll just type this up in Google Docs, you know, like, but like yeah. in the factory, they're trained not to like take, uh, what's the word? They're trained to like follow it to a T, and um, so being as specific as possible is ideal right right yeah no yeah you're right like the culture over there how they do things in the factory is just it's it's kind of bizarre but i guess that's the way that they're able to do like high quality you know sticking to the system yeah i mean and, that's how yeah. you get consistency and everything and uh yeah i mean it's just one of those things uh, yeah was, another thing that's like like trips me out is uh like the pantone stuff where like you know, you might have two different Pantone books and we, you don't know it. So like what right. we started doing is we, we use, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, an, an interior design Pantone, which doesn't have like all the call outs. So they have to essentially just mix it by, they'll mix it by sight and match it instead of like worrying about the percentages. Oh, uh, gotcha. We found that that's gotten a lot of luck, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, just in this Kickstarter, Another thing that we wanted to do was like really pack in uh, uh, built-in discounts. So like when we first launched, you know, the the only options that we had were like a two-figure pack and, and it included a weapon pack. So like, you know, it was like two reptiles and like a steeply discounted uh, weapon set. Um, and then after we made goal, we started offering single figures and then uh, like army builder options and uh, and then we kind of let people know that, you know, you can mix and match stuff as long as it's like a standard figure. You don't have to get just the rabbit and the fox. You can get the rabbit and the chameleon or you can get a different weapon set. Uh, and we let people know you, you'll do all that stuff in backer kit. So you don't necessarily have to, like, worry about picking out the figures in the Kickstarter. All that stuff you're going to pick out in backer kit. Um, and then, like, the, the all-in... Uh, the all in package essentially gets to all the stuff that we've, uh, you know, that we showed off originally. And then, uh, the Epic all in, uh, gets you just everything that gets unlocked. So there's a, and there, and oh, okay. like, those two have like a ton of like discount built into them. I don't remember what the numbers are offhand, but, um, yeah, that we, we, it's just kind of oh, a yeah. way to like thank people for, for backing during the Kickstarter, like a, a regular figure in the Kickstarter, like just a single figure is like $33. Uh, whenever they go live for regular retail, they'll be like 37 and some change. So it's just our way of saying like, thanks for like backing the Kickstarter, uh, letting us get an idea of what like the quantities for each SKU is going to be. Cause like, you know, we don't want to be like overestimating or under it's worse to underestimate and not, not have stuff left over, especially if like, you know, stuff gets lost in the mail. You want to have like plenty to 
to replace. And then obviously yeah. you want to have stuff to sell uh, at, at conventions and then to retailers as well. So, yeah, man, well, it's, <laughs> it's crazy how like, yeah, your Kickstarter is so like intimidating when I think about it, because like when I did mine, I, I didn't know what I was, was doing. Like, Kept it super simple. Uh, I see. And, and I would look at you guys and like, great, dude. Oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But yeah, like, you know, I would look at you guys, Plunderlings and, you know, Invincible Toys and all the other guys who I've seen have success. And it would be intimidating because I'd be like, I don't know what the fuck. And like, this is so much, you know, and even right now, but you're you're seasoned. So you know what you're doing. But like when I'm looking through your Kickstarter, I'm like, man, it is so I, I'm trying to imagine like how difficult <laughs> it must be for you guys to to manage it all. You know what I'm saying? It's so hard. Well, man, the first one was. The first one was the last one that we did was tough because like I wasn't anticipating how successful it was going to be. And like, dude, I just remember like staying up to like three o'clock in the morning, like painting, printing and painting stuff so we could phot photograph it. This time we've got an actual team that's helping us. Uh, that's awesome. So like behind the scenes, we've got, you know, help like Adam and Brick are helping and Derek's helping. Uh, and we're all kind of like taking little little portions of it and like and working on it. Uh, you know, Brick and I are like very like we have graphic design backgrounds. So, uh, you know, a lot of the graphics we're working on together and I'm I'm doing the paint masses and then uh, Arlen, uh, Dan and Carter are doing sculpts like they're working on like the additional headsets and stuff. And uh, it's very much this kind of like wonderful, chaotic dance of like producing <laughs> and as we unlock stuff, we're catching up and. You know, like we'll put up like 2D versions at Utoma, who's our, our uh, 2D artist. We'll put that up for the time being and then like replace it with the with the 3D painted stuff. And uh, it's it's a great problem to have. It's very exciting. Uh, we've we've officially unlocked everything, at, like all the stretch goals that we an announced on day one. We've unlocked all of that stuff. Uh, and now we're working on our first uh, new buck, which is the, the raving figure. Uh, Dan sculpting him right now. He looks freaking awesome. I cannot wait to like put him on the printer and start painting him. Uh, I'm hoping, I don't know if he'll have it done this weekend, but I'm hoping by like maybe Tuesday he'll have it done and then I can get that painted and photographed. And uh, so, you know, so as soon as he, is that like, yeah, go ahead. As soon as it unlocked, then he started working on it. Is that how you guys did it? Uh, no, it's not unlocked yet. It, it oh. unlocks at 260, but, uh, you know, we're anticipating it, you know, because we're entering like the last, we're entering the last little phase of the Kickstarter. We know where everything's going to start ramping up. Uh, so he's just going, he just went ahead and started working on it now so that we can show off the photos. And I, I mean, I feel like once we show like the images of it, people are going to be like, Oh yeah, I get it. It's not just a cartoon image. And then like that'll, that'll right. back. And then we'll kind of sail on through and, and unlock these other stuff uh, in the last few days of the Kickstarter. And it's interesting. Cause like, you know, last time I think we showed everything uh, like in physical form, except for Thane. Uh, and we kind of followed up like a, a 3d print, you know, a painted prototype of him, like in the following weeks after that, What's kind of fun about this one is um, we'll be sh we'll be like catching up and showing all these physical versions of it for probably you know a couple a month or two after the Kickstarter ends. Oh, that's uh, so that's people, dope. Though. Yeah, people will have reason to keep checking in and, and yeah. seeing you know these two D versions going into the three D versions. So crazy, yeah, man. You guys, it's fucking wild what you <laughs> what you got going on, man. Um, Thank you. I mean, you know, we we feel. So, someone last night said that it was very punk rock and i was like i guess it is you know i was in yeah. a rock band for years and i was like yeah i guess you know we're used to kind of doing everything ourselves and uh, yeah just it, underground it independent fun. yeah exactly yeah you know i mean one, one of the things that just drove me nuts uh like in the music industry and in the comic industry was like the gatekeeping you know so it was like you can have all this like great talent and stuff but if you don't know the right people it makes it like so much harder to kind of break in and I found that it was like the total opposite with that, with, with toys. It like, it seemed like it was like, Oh, you show this cool stuff. And people are like, cool. I, I like this, you know? Yeah, no, so, totally. Uh, yeah. I mean, like we, I, you know, I know I leveraged our, the success of the toys uh, to do the comics and stuff. Like diamond reached out to us about listing the toys. And I was like, Oh shit. You know, I'd really like to list the comics too. And they were like, we would love that. So they've, they've been great to us. And, 
Uh, yeah, Diamond that, that had Toy Story's been fantastic. Diamond had your toys on display at Comic Con, right? Yeah, they did. That was so cool. I was like, yeah. uh, it, uh, it, Eric was sending me images of it, and I was like, man, that feels like surreal. You know, I was, I was like, that's really cool. Yeah, no, that is. It was really cool to see. Um, real quick before I forget, yeah. So the Epic All In, uh, it looks like so it's six hundred and fifty dollars, but the retail value would have been nine hundred and ninety one dollars. So yeah, that that is a right, significant exactly. discount. You're getting four hundred dollars off. Exactly. Yeah, you're getting four hundred dollars off. So and that's just, you know, we're happy to do it. It's our way of like saying, you know, thank you so much for you know believing in us. And and you know, six hundred and ninety dollars is not chump change. So yeah, uh, we really really appreciate it. And you know, I, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to, you know, that's a lot of figures. So I have a feeling a lot of people will get what they need and then they might, you know, sell the, the other stuff off to, friend, you know, trade with friends or sell stuff off sure. and uh, make a little bit money back off of it. So I know a lot of people do that with like the HasLab stuff. They'll buy like uh, two, two of them, keep one for themselves, sell one, make their money back and they essentially get like a free his tank. I've heard, I've heard, yeah, I've yeah. heard these things. I don't know. <laughs> yeah you raffle it off i mean uh i don't know right yeah <laughs> uh, uh let's see austin m says gotta plug it you know don't worry they were talking about the cartoon and i'm an actor oh yeah austin m a little earlier was saying whenever oh, you need voice talent and he wants to yeah. audition is he a sag member <laughs> oh what happened to the underground spirit you're going hollywood that's going right hollywood that's right dang it fucking quick you know what sell what's, out what's funny is um uh, Oh man, I can't, I can't remember the actor's name, but he played uh, Freddie Mercury on uh in the uh, the Queen biopic. He was yeah. doing an interview and they were, he did uh, like just real quick, he did this interview and he said uh this this talent agent called and was like, "Hey, we want you to play this part on this TV show." And uh, he was pretending to be his agent and and the lady was like, "Wait, is this the actual actor?" And he's like, "Yes, it is." <laughs> and she was like, "Well, that's fine." And he and he was like, "Well, let me just let me just come down and audition for it. We don't need to get a, an agent involved." And she was like, "Well, are you a member of the SAG uh, uh, a SAG union?" And he was like, "No, yeah, look, yeah, someone, uh, Ramey, yeah, Ramey." Uh, and but it was just funny because like he wasn't even a member of SAG and like they let him go and do it. So it's like. <laughs> I, I very much like to like kick in those doors and, and kind of make my own path. And yeah, what Adam said, he said, Adam said, as long as I'm associated with Spiro, we're staying punk rock. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So let me see. Someone named Austin mentioned something, but my eyes are a little fuzzy. Let's see what it says. I uh, heard the next character Jason was looking for was uh, a New Finland medic. Oh, yeah. They, he was talking about that other day. That's a dog. Okay. <laughs> there, we got all kind of like dog requests because we, we introduced uh, Grimes, our first uh, bulldog figure. Oh, yeah. No, that, that would be cool. Some more dogs. Yeah, we're definitely going to be doing a lot of dogs. And that's the thing is like this Kickstarter is so essential because it really opens up the park catalog. Now we've got access to so many different like breeds of dog. You know, we've got we've got two goldens and like, I don't think our goldens would work on that buck. We'd probably do a different buck. So yeah, now we're going to, well, now we're going to have that option, you know? So, you know, you don't want a chihuahua on that big giant body. I mean, you probably That'd could look for comic effect, but that would look cool. Yeah, no, it would look funny. It would look like the crab on SpongeBob or something. Right. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the lifeguard yeah, uh, mythic dolphin. Tiffany says that I can still get snout spouts. So I guess I need to go ahead and get it for research. That's another thing you should be running off. Well, first you should CPA and then you should be legitimately writing off all the action figures you get for research. Oh, I write them all. Yeah. I write off a lot of stuff cause it's, it's all for YouTube anyways, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's a good idea. I mean, like, you know, I, I can't, I can't figure uh, there, it's, it's almost never that I buy a figure that like I want and I'm going to use for, for, for fun. Like there's, it's so rare that there's not something that I look at and I'm like, oh yeah, I could apply this to this figure in the collection, you know, in our, in our portfolio, even if it's accessories or packaging. Oh yeah. I'm like, oh, like sometimes like there's another project I can't talk about, but like I've bought packaging, I've bought toys that I, they just didn't open them for the packaging for like references. Oh shit. Um, okay. Let's do about, uh, it's almost let's do about like 10 more minutes and then we'll get out of here and uh okay. 
give people a chance to answer uh, to ask some questions. And is there anything else yeah. you want to touch on for for your Kickstarter? Yeah. So you know, Kickstarter has been around forever, but we always say you know you don't get you don't get billed right away. Uh, we've got 11 days left, so there's no reason not to back and pick what you want now. You won't get billed until the 11th. So, uh, you know, there's no need to wait. Go ahead and pick out the goodies that you want, and then uh, then you'll get billed uh, two days after your tax returns. So all that hard-earned cash that uh, Uncle Sam gives back to you, you can uh, reward yourself with some awesome action figures. Was that, was that a strategic as well? <laughs> like, Yeah, so so – so the length of the Kickstarter was for two reasons. One of them, I wanted to try to get in uh, three, three paydays or three pay periods uh, in, in, in the duration so people could save up. Yeah. Uh, and then we wanted to end two days after everyone gets their tax return. So that way, you know, the people that want to really kind of go all in, uh, they don't have to sweat it. They'll have a little, they had the time to kind of save up and, and get the stuff that they wanted. Yeah, for sure. No, that's, it's funny, like every little decision, like is important when you're doing something like this, like er every little thing, like even the yeah, time of day that you end and everything. Yeah, it, it really is like, uh, I analyze everything, like everything, like a lot of times I'll analyze stuff too much. And that's just like an everyday life. Like I'll see someone <laughs> walking and I'm like, that person's got like a, a like a herniated disc and i'm like why am i worried about that like what why am i thinking about that you know so i i tend to try to like really break stuff apart and and pull that data out and, and apply it to what we're trying to do man yeah let's see what it's at let's oh, see what it's at i haven't looked at it yeah it's at it's at 233,000. That. that's crazy but what Sweet. what's even what's crazy to me too is just how the the initial goal was only 99,000 like right yeah it, so i mean we're obviously injecting you know we're going to be using a lot of our own capital for this project right uh, and we wanted to do it rel you know ninety nine thousand is nothing to balk at that's like an amazing you know that's a lot of money yeah amount of money it really is uh and we wanted to try to do something that we felt was uh, uh you know attainable to the backers because right, it right. can be kind of overwhelming, like seeing those big numbers is overwhelming. Uh, and we wanted to hit goal as soon as possible. And then kind of like built in all that stretch goal stuff to kind of make up a little bit of the difference. Yeah, for sure. No, like if people see you, I could read it. If your Kickstarter was like initially 250,000, yeah, people might look at it and go, oh. it won't make it or whatever. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Josh Brown says, are there any more retailer orders coming in during the Kickstarter? Uh, I'm not sure if he's asking, like, uh, you know, we've get, we've got, um, we've got retailers like, that are buying stuff that's in stock. Oh. And then we've got, uh, retailers that are going to back the Kickstarter, uh, as well. So I was just on the phone with someone this morning, uh, with a retailer that was, you know, they were, they were trying to figure out what their order was going to be. So uh, the answer is yes to both. Yeah, whatever you meant, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys in the chat, do you guys have any questions uh, for Jason before we get out of here? Uh, but yeah, man, I'm happy for you. I'm really happy uh, that you know Thanks, your previous ones have been successful, and I'm happy that the figures came out so good. And it's awesome that like you know, just as like your wave one was coming out and like catching fire and people were doing their thing. Everybody loves them. I haven't heard a bad thing about them. Thanks, and, uh, yeah. you know, soon as that kind of release. Oh, oh shit. Know? Yeah, man. I feel like, <laughs> I, oh my God. So, you know what I'm going through? Like sitting here thinking, man, I hope people like my shit, you know, but you yeah. never know. Uh, like no joke. Like I'm so proud of you. Like, I think like what you do is freaking awesome and like all the like hands and everything and like just the jam-packed uh, articulation and then doing the soft goods on top of that i was like man this is so freaking awesome like <laughs> i just love it i can't wait to get it um yeah you backed it pretty early because what's that you backed it that, pretty yeah, early okay. so so full disclosure like i backed stuff and pre-order stuff and then i legitimately forget about it uh, that's <laughs> one thing i'll, I'll like so like one of my character flaws is like being very like forgetful, uh, like I, and bricks, like bricks started making a schedule for me, which is kind of keep me on task. 
because uh, I just tend to like get into my own little headspace and, and forget, but like I'll back stuff and it shows up and I'm like, oh, cool. I totally forgot. I'm so glad I backed this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, like I know what you're going through. I know everyone, every production is unique and different, but it's like, like mad respect for going through it. And, and like, once you, once you get through the trenches, you're just like, that wasn't so bad. Let's try that again. You know, <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, I hope yeah, I get to that point. Awesome. You will, dude. You absolutely will. Like, uh, that that's a that's the thing that's funny. It's uh, I kind of think of it like uh, you know, when when people have kids and like the 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 toddlers like right out of diapers, and like eight months after that, you were like, those diapers weren't that bad. I didn't. We didn't have sleep deprivation, and then we're like, let's <laughs> let's try. It. Let's have another one. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so literally actually me about the 97 Cyclops, this figure is freaking awesome. I can't <laughs> decide if I, I can't decide which head I want to put on it. Uh, this is obviously the cooler of the two heads, but, uh, you know, I mean, I don't want it to knock, I don't want it to knock over my other figures. So right now I just have the other head on there. Yeah. The, the plain head looks a little weird. I haven't opened mine yet, but, um, yeah, it, it's cool. It's fine. It's all right, but I do prefer I I do prefer the, like the gamma ray head more. For sure. Uh literally action figure says Jason, you showed uh rhinos and hippos, but they're not on the page. Will they reuse yeah, the gonna, mumble mold? Gonna, no, it's a totally different mold. Uh so that's another thing. Like before we launched the Kickstarter, uh we were going to do the rhino and the hippo figure before the elephant, but uh, we felt that the elephant was such uh, a fan draw that we decided to swap spaces. Uh, so the elephant in the rhino slash hippo will be totally different from bucks. We're going to upload those stretch goals uh, early, early next week. So they'll be able to kind of see what the actual, you know, stretch goal amount is for that stuff. Uh, but we're going to make uh, a ton of different figures with those hippos and, and rhino bucks. Uh, there's all kind of stuff planned out. Uh, walruses and oh nice like that, you know? yeah. uh josh brown says uh seriously since i saw some of these at PowerCon, i've been waiting for this kickstarter uh jason i'm oh, the sweet. guy that traded you demenstros oh cool awesome man thank you yeah that's cool man that's really cool you know that that's one thing that we hear a lot like people will see the toys online and they're like that's cool and but i don't know if i want to dive in and then they see it in person and uh, I think Adam coined the term hand candy. Like a lot of times we'll just like have them out and like fidgeting with them and just posing them and people see them in person and like, oh, I get it. And then we hand it over and let them play with it and they can feel the quality. And uh, it, it's very cool seeing people uh, kind of experience them for the first time. So yeah, we, we, we love uh, meeting people at conventions and watching them kind of like put both feet, like just jump in with both feet into the, uh, into the ip yeah no they definitely do have like a hand friendly appeal like when uh when i first got my shipment or uh maybe it was like the second wave or second shipment or whatever like i put this together and i was playing around with like this for <laughs> forever i like some i like the more simple you know the yeah. simple designs that are funner to play with and shit yeah those are, and they're great for drawing you know really yeah kind of pose them out and, and i'm i'm garbage about posing stuff like Look at these. This is this is how I normally post stuff. They're just like, like real vanilla. <laughs> but uh, like seeing people post stuff, I'm just like, holy cow! Like, th watch. I'll show you this. This is like a like fancy pose for me. Like it's uh, it's it's funny. <laughs> uh, they're like they're just all they're just just like no. uh, you know. So yeah, no, they're e they're easy that. to post. Like, yeah. yeah. No, they're, they're really just, a just buttery articulation, just so smooth and. They're definitely a uh, hand friendly. Um, Jamie Lynn Park says, Jason, not really a question, but I love the first waves. Uh, the one thing I wish is that they had a few more weapon storage options. Yeah, that's another thing. That's such a great question. Um, so it's, it's funny, you know, I, I'm sure you felt the same way, like where you design the figure for you, you know, and you like, yeah, for sure. Else likes them. Yeah. Uh, so like the, the main feedback that we got was like, we wanted, they wanted pinless. Uh, and they wanted weapon storage. So uh, we are working on uh, like a, a kind of a generic sash and then like items that hold weapons specifically. Uh, so we, we were talking about like giving away stuff that we, you know, there's several things that we're going to just be like backers are going to get that 
they just don't we haven't talked about but that's one of the things that we're going to be including is like oh nice uh weapon storage type stuff yeah so uh it's just one of the i we didn't want to talk about it but i feel like we need to mention it so uh yeah we 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 heard the fans and we i thought it was very legit uh request so we we definitely want to do that type of stuff uh, um we are, we are doing that stuff the red hood says got a question for jason jason are there uh, are there going to be characters based on other big cats like leopards, tigers, and panthers, etc.? Absolutely, yeah, definitely, yeah. And and depending on who the character is, you might get like a a thin a thin build uh, tiger, or you might get one of those big beefy tigers. It just depends on the character in the book, and you'll probably get more than one. You know, you'll probably nice. get both body types. Uh, okay, let's get one more question here, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, G Marcus says, Jason, I backed in the future. Would you? Uh, do releases with more premium deco, like Mythic Legions kind of deco, rather than He-Man style. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's one of those things where we'll probably do it as like a special edition figure. So, uh, yeah, I, I've definitely, I've definitely thought about it. Uh, one of the ways that I play with my toys is like, you know, with the exception of like this new X-Men stuff, is I always like to do dry brushing on all like you know, like these classified yeah. figures, I almost always dry brush and add a little bit of airbrushing and stuff. Uh, but yeah, we, we really do want to do that type of stuff and offer them as like a premium special edition version. So it'll probably be decked out with, you know, more than more than one uh, set of armor. Uh, you know, it'll come have like two different heads. All the hands are standard, you know, they come with, but a lot of weapons and stuff like that and make it really feel like a deluxe type of character or figure, I should say. Yeah, that would be cool for sure. But I think like even the sculpts kind of lend themselves well to like a more animated feel, you know. But right, I, yeah, they're supposed to represent like the cart, the, the the comic book version of the character, you know. Right, right. Um, Game Quest says Spiro has an all star team. No question. Yeah, that man, that's dope that you got like a like a whole squad. Yeah, <laughs> so lucky. Yeah, dude. Like we just, it's just one of those things where like. uh I feel like we, I feel like I kind of, uh, like my kind of fun, positive energy, like attracted this great talent pool. And, you know, our sculptors, I, I, we, we all became fr like the, our, you know, our two senior sculptors and then our, our 2D senior artists, we all became friend, like really good friends during COVID. We were just kind of like locked up and we couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. And it just kind of like snowballed from there. So yeah, man, I'm like super grateful and don't take any of it for granted. Very cool, man. Um, all right. Well, Jason, thank you so much for coming on. And like I said, uh, you know, I wish you the best on this Kickstarter. Like it's already, <laughs> I feel dumb saying it. it's already <laughs> successful, but um, yeah, I, I know there's a long way to go. Hopefully all this stuff gets unlocked. It'd be really cool to see Mamba get unlocked uh, based yeah, on what you right? said. Yeah, it'd be really dope. And a lot of people were hyped up about it. Like a lot of people in the chat were saying Mamba, you know, free Mamba and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, thank you so much for coming on, and I wish you the best. Oh, man, thank you for having me, dude. I hope you have a great weekend, and uh, anytime you want to chat toys, I know, I know we talk to each other on Instagram, so I, I would love to hear like the uh, how the factory uh, production and everything's going on outside of live uh, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's a, uh, well, you know, it's a pain in the ass. You already know, <laughs> like, it sucks. It's a marathon. It's something yeah. that you have to that's just kind of like make you just have to realize you're taking it in strive and you have to kind of set up little milestones and everything so you don't feel uh like you're treading water so long. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's good advice. Um but yeah, everyone in the chat, thank you for coming through. Uh thank you for all the great questions Thanks, and the great conversation and all that good shit. And uh we'll see you guys later. You guys have a good weekend. Oh yeah, don't forget to back. Also, one quick reminder, um, you know, obviously you could go to uh, Kickstarter and just type in Spiro, you know, it's pretty easy to find, but also I left a link to the Kickstarter in the description oh, below. Sweet. So you could go there if you need to, or, you know, type up animal warriors of the kingdom primal series two and Kickstarter and uh, you'll find it. it's pretty easy. So check it out. Cool deal. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Peace out everybody. <laughs>